excited to introduce to everybody Joe Bradley to, today. Uh, if you don't know Joe, you should if you're any sort of fan of any of any strength sports. I, this interview is actually from about three years ago, and I, I could not find where it was located because we moved and all this stuff, and I finally have it. So if you look at the screen, you can see a picture of Joe Bradley. The video's audio. But uh, we're going to cover all sorts of information about J Joe today from his training, from when he lived with Dr. Squat to his time in the penitentiary training. So he was someone we had actually interviewed prior to um, the release of Jailhouse Strong. So, and that was, um, you know, because we had all these different sources. And um, he's also uh, someone I was put in touch with, and he was mentored by Fred Hatfield, who's mentored toward me. And Fred Hatfield and the and International Sports Sciences Association was extremely helpful in contacting us because Joe's not big on the social media or anything like that. So anyway, just a little bit about Joe if you don't already know him. So um, in 1980, at 123 pounds, Joe squatted 650, and that's in just a single ply suit. And you know, this is a very you know, so it's not like the single ply today. It's not like where you you know your buddy's judging. It's where the judges were out to get you. It's some half-assed single ply suit that hardly added anything, and you know, ace bandage type wraps. And at the same 100, this at 123 pounds, he also bench pressed. 397 pounds raw. The average person that works out, at least recreationally, and even a lot of powerlifters that weigh over 300 pounds, you know, today can't bench press that raw. So that is uh, so far ahead of its time. In 1981, weighing 148 pounds, you know, in minimal equipment, no bench press shirt, Joe totaled 16.14 at 148. These are national meets with the strictest judging. And, and then in 1982, Joe bench pressed 402 weighing 130 pounds. So Joe's definitely, you know, one of the best powerlifters of all time when you take into account pound for pound. And anyways, um, you know, we're going to work, like I said, we're going to cover all his, all his training techniques, his personal life. And then, uh, then he even was one of the people, him and Dr. Fred Hatfield pioneered on when to take whiskey shots before deadlifts. Thanks, thanks David Brayton. And um, we're going to have this all covered. So enjoy the interview. Hey, this is Josh Bryant here with legendary powerlifter Joe Bradley, arguably the best pound-for-pound powerlifter of all time. Welcome aboard, Joe. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Doing all right. Awesome. We're really glad to have you on. When Fred and I first talked about this, you were one of the first names that came up, so it's awesome that you were able to do this. Oh, the oh. triple-time bodyweight bench press? Oh, no, just to be all talking, you know, we're going to talk a lot about triple body bench press. Um, how did you, how'd you get involved with lifting weights? Just tell us a little about yourself. Were you always into weightlifting growing up? Uh, no, I, I kind of uh, would look at muscle max, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and I wanted to be a bodybuilder, and I started farting around with weights when I was about, like, 12. You know, but you know, they got into more than that. So, you know, I started. Uh, well, actually, I was uh, as I got older, I was getting in a lot of trouble and stuff, and you know, and then I really started training uh, in Green Bay uh, Reformatory. So, and so then I got with other guys working out in there, you know, to, um, you know, keep my sanity and stuff, you know, so I wouldn't go crazy, you know. Mm -hmm. And then they was, kept pushing me to join the power team, you know, their power team, power listening team, and, um, and I did, you know, it was like, when I say about uh, 79, around 79. Or 79. So would you guys, um, when you guys were doing meets, uh, would the, the meets be actually behind bars, or would they let you guys go to like a, say a, a meet Yeah, we to went to, we, was, we got, we were able to go to uh, state meets, you know, in the, through the state, and, uh, I was lifting at 123 then. Okay. Uh, and uh, one was a sanctioned meet over in Milwaukee, and 
uh, I set my first world record there. So because they had international judges there and stuff like that, so That's right. that was my first world record at one thirty. I mean one twenty three. So. And you the, and, uh, as like so you were it was like a meet open to anybody though so it wasn't like uh, like a a prison meet it was like you were competing against. No, it was you know, actually free state people. meets. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Free people. Yeah. Yeah. They, they don't do that yeah. nowadays. That's well, like they, that. well, guards would come, you know, take me <laughs> out to, you know, the meets and stuff like that. So Yeah, totally. You know, but there were legit, you know, they just were, had were there one a lot there of, with were there, the, Huh? Were there a lot of strong guys in the in the prison? Oh, yeah. Quite a few. Yeah. How did you guys uh, get knowledge on how to lift in there? Did you have a coach or something, or did you just have to read magazines or something? Uh, we had magazines, um, and we would go buy magazines and, um, you know, workouts and stuff. You know, what they would do, you know, mm-hmm. sets of fives. Eights and you know some of their training methods and then all of a sudden you know uh, I guess Fred uh, kind of discovered me because uh, Fred was one of my idols you know in the squat you know mm-hmm. you know and we became best friends and stuff like that you know and and I actually got to meet him when when I said. I think when I said that, or at a bank. Yeah, he said he met you at that meet that you set the world record at, yep. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's when we met and stuff. And and then, you know, I started doing his training technique, you know, he had, you know, he got a lot of ways to train as far as strength training, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you know. He's the best. We uh, oh. took it from there, you know, and did a lot of traveling around the world. And, what, and where's yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you. Where where have you traveled? And you got any good stories uh, about any of the places you've traveled or for for me? Uh, Calcutta, India, and uh, oh wow, let's see, South Africa. Okay, got some world records there, and. In India, but in Phoenix, Arizona, was the first time I uh, did a triple body weight. Uh, well, uh, it wasn't Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, Phoenix, Arizona was the first time I did the triple body weight body weight at uh, 132 there, and uh, I had. To, I, I didn't really do too good at my squat. It was like six forty something because I I was in a car accident and I had broke my ankle and stuff. But I managed oh, wow. to get a world record four oh two at at the uh, in Phoenix. So and that, that was without a bench pressure. Time by the way, huh? Was that without a bench pressure? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That that'd be an ama- yeah. that'd be even an amazing lift with one, but without one, that's I mean that's all no, you know that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. What? And so you lifted one thirty twos, and um, I've seen you lifted one one twenty threes, one forty eights, right? Yep. Any other weight classes? Well, I tried one sixty five, but <laughs> uh. I've never set no rec- world records in those classes, but in the 48s and 32s and 123, I have, you know. Gotcha. So, what what but, titles have you won? Uh, let's see. What titles? Well, ICF see. World Champion, you know. Um, yeah, world world champion titles. All of them were world champion titles. How, how many how many times have you won it? Well, let's see. Um, <laughs> she asked me, "Do I need my book?" 
<laughs> well, we'll put it this way. I had between uh, all of those um, three weight classes I set over. Uh, well, I did a five-time body weight squat too at 132. So, and that was uh, 650. So, wow. But uh, uh, between all of those. You know, weight classes and stuff, I had uh, half a dozen world record titles or better. You know, the uh, total, and, and and usually it would be the squat, you know, and bench press. Mainly the, total, the totals, pretty much, you gotcha. know. Yeah, to win the whole event, you know. And I had some bad luck sometimes, you know, when we was like, you know, California, you know. Got it. And ABC, CBS, Wide World of Sports, when they were doing that, you know, I bombed out at that that meet, you know. So I guess I was too hyped up, I guess. It was too hot or something, too nervous. They had it in Madison. Um was that the one with the air fishing broke or something? Yeah, I think so. It, yeah, it was televised. I remember it. reading about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was pretty hot in that place. But, well, and um, you lived and, for, didn't you and Fred actually live together for a while in New Orleans? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we moved to New Orleans from Madison. I stayed with him up in Madison, you know, right after I probably got out, you know, not too long in a couple of weeks, and you know, then uh, was able to, you know, get me an apartment and stuff like that, get situated up there and stuff. So, and then we moved to New Orleans after that, and you know, meanwhile, we were still, you know, competing, you know, that's awesome through the state, um, you know. What do you do? You follow powerlifting much nowadays? Now, oh, I'm yeah, retired now, now. Yeah, no, I know. Would you follow uh, it at all? The, well, let's see. Um, they were trying to get the federation under one umbrella down there in Chicago. Uh, Mark, two thousand. I think. Are you talking about the Vince America deal? I think I think so. But they was trying to. We went and watched it. You know, who was that? Mar- uh, Marl. Yeah. Marl. Yeah. yeah, Marl had us go down Chicago and mm-hmm. stuff. You know, to that was that was kind of interesting. You know, watching that. You know, well, they they what is it, like the IPF. And uh, what was the other one? They wanted it all. Huh? Yeah, they wanted everybody to come together for that one. Yeah. So we got the... Uh, Fred didn't get to make it down there, though. Oh, he was sick. Yeah, I guess. I guess he was sick. Uh, Larry Pacifico was down there, and uh, quite a few other guys were down there. Oh, wow. I guess it, I guess it turned out pretty okay, I guess. It was a nice little trip, though, you know, meeting all the guys and stuff like that, you know, so. What do you think about all of the the latest, like, supportive equipment in powerlifting nowadays? What I think about the latest equipment they got? Yeah, suits, shirts, and all that kind of stuff. What are your thoughts on it? Oh, uh, well... I haven't seen too much of it. She said I haven't been seeing it. <laughs> the new equipment and stuff, but I don't know. She just messed me up. Anyway, <laughs> well, I imagine, I imagine you know the bench press suits have been around for a while, though. You know, Big but as far as the other stuff. She's probably right about that because, you know, 
We ain't been to a real gym in uh, years. You know, I usually just fight around at home, light training and stuff. So, but and um, then I got it. Huh? I said, I said, go ahead, finish what you're saying. Oh, then I got inducted to the Hall of Fame here in Beloit. You know, so that was a an honor. I was about three years ago. I saw that. that was about three years ago, right? I saw that when I was looking you up. Yeah. Yeah. That was what are cool. so? What are some of your best? What are your best lifts in competition at the different weight classes? Do you know them off the top of your head? Best best list in the competition. Yeah. Bench. No, no, I mean, like, number-wise, your best, the most you've ever lifted in, in comp- competition. In all, oh, all in competition? Months. Yes, sir. Uh, it probably had to be uh, uh, 148, a triple-time bodyweight bench press. Wow. Uh, and then my deadlift went up to six, so, and then it would be the total, you know. You deadlifted six at 148? Yeah. Yeah, I, I finally got wild. it up there. <laughs> I was staying stuck at uh, 575 and stuff like that, but did a lot of training with Hatfield and stuff and, you know, those eight. Speaking of deadlifts, uh, Fred... Fred and I were talking about um, taking shots of whiskey before you deadlift. Did you guys used to do that? Yeah, we used to do that. <laughs> what? Tell me about it. It worked like, what for a minute. Do- then it <laughs> <laughs> I guess it worked for a minute, but, you know. So if, if you were to try that, what, would you do it, like, just before your third attempt or something? Because you don't want to be, you know, sl- you don't want to be – you know, tanked well, you're deadlifting, obviously. So, would you do it just right before your third attempt? Like, mean, how long would it, how long would it, would it sort of work before it become a hindrance? Probably about maybe twenty seconds. So, if I was going to okay. do it, I'd say just grab a bottle of whiskey, take a take a shot, then just go up and deadlift. Yeah. yeah. What what kind yeah, of whiskey was? Huh. What kind of whiskey was it? I just Jack Daniels, I guess. Regular old good old whiskey, I guess. <laughs> oh, I thought you had some top secret moonshine or something. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> just whiskey. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, what what about in other uh, feats of strength in the gym? Like there were like any like big lifts you hit in the gym of the. Pa- you know, the squat, bench, deadlift, or, or even any, like, other lifts, like, say, dips, rows, pull-ups, anything you did as an accessory movement you think that people would be interested in knowing? Yeah, say that again. I, I ain't quite it. Tell me about some of your uh, feet of strength in the gym, so not just, like, your, um, you know, it, it could be in the parallel thing, like a rep record or, like, a, a big lift you hit in the gym or even on some of your assistance exercises. Oh, well, well, my main list was just the squat and the bench, bench pressing. So, and then I got to working on uh, my dead list and finally got that up. But uh, off the record, I I tried to do do seven, but mm-hmm. uh, it, no no luck there. <laughs> And then I tried to bench bench over uh I I say pretty close to four seventy five but I I couldn't do it then, you know, after Gotcha. Yeah. Did you do um, what, what did you do any accessory movements in your training besides the bench squat and deadlift? Did you do anything else? What do you mean, like, as far as building? Uh, yeah, like building movements, strength? body build movements or, or anything. Uh, to help those with. Just sets of, sets, of, sets of fives and eights, pyramids, and um, now what else are we going to say? Um, Sorry, before I go down 
something triples, you know, alternate light, heavy, triples. So when you get closer to the meet, you do stuff like triples, and further out, you do higher reps? Yeah. Did, did you ever train any kind of bodybuilding movements at all? Uh, for bodybuilding? I mean, I know, I know you weren't like a bodybuilder, but do you train any bodybuilding movements, like do curls, lap pull-downs? You know, oh, try yeah, some I, I would do that stuff, you know. Try to build foundation and strength. Wise. What? Okay, so what were uh, some of your like foundation building movements for your bench press? Uh, triceps, um, pullovers. Okay. Um, shoulder um, presses. Pretty much, I think. What about squats? Well, squats would be, you know, uh, uh, leg presses, Mm -hmm. lunges, um, leg extensions, leg curls. (laughs) What about on deadlifts? Do you have anything that you think help you, any of the movements there that help you? Well... I used to work out of the power rack, you know, and that way I get through my push through my sticking point. So I, I used to do the power rack a lot. I mean, yeah, power rack. So you basically you know, would do uh, like deadlifts from varying heights within the power rack. Yeah, you have it, you know, a little bit off of the floor, you know, and you know working from there, you know. Gotcha. Uh, To get through the sticking points, you know, so you could be able to lock out. Absolutely. And how how often do you train high reps, and do you think they helped you? Uh, I say high reps. Probably about three times a week, maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, and then, you know, back back it down. Gotcha. Did you ever do any part, like, I know you just said you did um, the rack pulls in the rack. Did you do any other kind of partial overloads for, or overloads for a squat or bench, like, say, like, heavy walkouts in the squat? Power cleans. Power cleans. Did you ever do any, like, heavy walkouts in the squat? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we used to do that. What about in the bench press? Ever anything where you, like, partial movements to handle heavier weights? Like presses in the rack or board presses or anything like that? Nope, just explosive. Explosive push-off right off the chest, you know, Mm -hmm. pretty much. So you just try to push that bar as explosively as possible? Yeah. Did you ever use any bands or chains in your training at all, like some powerlifters nowadays do? Uh, probably straps for deadlift. I, I used to use some of those. I the what now? The straps for the deadlifting. Cause, no, no, uh, I'm talking about hands. bands and chains that attach to the end of the barbell to make, like, so... As you pull it up, the band stretches out and, and it makes it uh, resist more as you pull the weight up. You know what I'm talking about? No. <laughs> it's probably one of those things I don't know about now. <laughs> yeah, it would have been. I, yeah, it's a new uh, thing. I didn't. Okay, it makes sense. Yeah. Well, no. The only only thing is this ra- uh, straps. <laughs> you know. Gotcha. I don't even know if they still still got those around. (laughs) They still got those around, yep. Yeah. (laughs) You you obviously are one of the best powerlifters of all time, so um, tell me about your your mindset. Like, what what, what did your mental game do to help you be so successful? Like, do you visualize or, or do anything like that? 
Well, yeah, pretty much. I say, you know, because I didn't think I was going to be a bodybuilder, you know, because yeah, I, you know, I just didn't think I was going to be a bodybuilder, you know. Mm-hmm. And I found, you know, everybody encouraged me to be a power lifter and, you know, and I, I thought maybe that would have been that it it was for me, you know, to try that and break world records. And, and a God gift, one of the gifts from God and the thanks of Fred Hatfield. Mm-hmm. Did you... Um... How long have you been retired from powerlifting? Oh. <laughs> well, I think I stopped in, let's see. <laughs> all we did, well, she said all we've been doing is working for the last 15 years. So <laughs> so it's been a while, so it might it could be about what, 20, I'd say, pretty much. You know, I've been getting, you know, plaques and stuff like that, you know, being honored and stuff like that and stuff, you know, right up to uh, 2000, and, you know, 95, I would say, when I stopped uh, competing officially. Are you still working out now at all? Oh, I just fart around, walk every day, and fart around with the weights and stuff you know, once in a while, stay in shape. When, when you were competing, did you take advantage of any of the um, ways to help you recover, like stretching or massage or icing or anything? Uh, well, we used a lot of ice, you know, as far as when we were injured, you know. You're supposed mm-hmm. to go to ice right away, you know. And... It helped. Um, and used a lot of ibuprofen. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, you ever seen about doing another meet again as a master's competitor? No, I think I'm done. <laughs> I've been out of it for uh, too long, I guess, you know. Well, I got one last question for you. What do you so what have you been up to since you've uh, stopped powerlifting? Like, what have you been up to the last 20 years? Uh, working. <laughs> what, what are you idea. doing now? Uh, I work at a restaurant in Beloit, uh, kitchen assistant. I do a little bit of everything. Sometimes I cook, you know, clean up the place before they get ready to open up. Uh, I don't know. Everything's kind of tied up in that job. Custodial, you know, you know, maybe everybody show up, then maybe I, I might be cooking, you know. But I've been there for a pretty good while. But, and then, let's see, I was a custodian at uh, this church um, in, um, let's see, uh, downtown area of Beloit, uh, What's the name of that church? Yeah, the River of Life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As a custodian, uh, cleaning up a daycare and stuff. But they closed uh, Friday. So I'm down to one job now. So. Gotcha. I had to see what how I find that is going to roll around. Because I might be working again. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. To make ends meet, you know. Mhm. Yeah. Well, um, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us, and um, definitely like to get back in touch with you again. We're gonna work on writing the history of iron, and we'd love to have your input. So. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate it, Joe. Anything else you want to add? All right. No, that's about it. I guess. Okay. Well, thank you. Hey, you got a deal? What's that? 
Do you have hang on, a one gym? Sec- hang on one second, okay? Yeah. Hang on. 